Good morning, committee, and welcome to any member of the public joining the 6th of May 2021 meeting of the Western and Southern Area Planning Committee, which is one of the three area based planning committees of the Dorset Council. Our area of remit covers the previous Weymouth and Portland Borough Council and most of the previous West Dorset District Council areas. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Council has had to put in place measures to enable the Council's decision making process to continue whilst keeping safe members of the public, councillors and Council staff in accordance with the government's guidance on social distancing by applying new regulations for holding committee meetings from remote locations. Therefore, this meeting is being live streamed to the public and a copy of the recording will be available on the Council website following the meeting. Members of the public are inv invited to make written representations, provided they are submitted to Democratic Services by 8.30 no later than two working days before the meeting. These representations will take the form of written statements of no more than 450 words with no attachments and will be read out at the committee meeting by our administration assistants. assistant. For the benefit of the public, my name is Councillor David Shortell, Chairman of this Area Planning Committee, and my Vice Chairman is Councillor Bill Pipe. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, everybody. Introducing other members of the committee, Councillor Dave Barwell. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, everybody else. Uh, Councillor Kelvin Clayton. Good morning, Kelvin. Good morning, Chair. Morning, all. Uh, Councillor Susan Cocking. Good morning, Susan. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Vice Chair and everyone else. Councillor Jean Dunseth. Good morning, Jean. Good morning, Chairman and everyone else. Councillor Nick Ireland. Good morning, Nick. Good morning. I'm present. Thank you. Good. Uh, Councillor Paul Kimber. Good morning, Pook Four. Uh, good morning, Chair, and uh, everybody, everybody else. My first uh, planning meeting. Thank you. Okay, okay, Paul. Well, welcome to the Western and Southern Area Planning Committee. It's good to have you on board. Um, right, Councillor Paul Kimber. Good morning, Paul. As I've already said that Councillor Louis O'Leary. That's the one that I was waiting for. Is Louis present? Uh, uh, he's, he's messaged in the chat bar, Chairman. Why am I not uh, being able to join the meeting as a participant? And I've asked Denise to look into this uh, for me. Oh, thank you, thank you, Bill. Well, I think I think in the meanwhile, um, I I can offer Councillor O'Leary's apologies until he does join the meeting. Okay. If he, you, or he ad advises me when he can join the meeting, um, uh, uh, then uh, I appreciate that. I certainly will. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Well. Chairman, I'm calling him from the meeting as we speak. I'm trying to call him from the meeting to get him into it. OK, OK, Denise. Thank you very much. OK, uh, Councillor Kate Weller. Good morning, Kate. <coughs> morning, Chairman. Good morning, everyone. Councillor Sarah Williams. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, all. And finally, Councillor John Worth. Good morning, John. Good, good morning, Chair. Good morning, everyone. I'll take this opportunity to thank Councillor Mike Byrne, who has been transferred to a, another planning committee, for his contribution to this committee in the past few months. For your information, officers involved at the meeting include Anna Lee. Good morning, Anna. Sorry, good morning, Chair. Uh, she's the service manager. Uh, Bill Crowther, the solicitor. Good morning, Bill. Good morning. Uh, Jenny Williams, technical support and technical support. Good morning, Jenny. No, no Jenny Williams. Uh, Denise Hunt, good morning, Denise. Morning, Chairman. Denise is uh, Democratic Services. And we also have Hannah Massey uh, uh, with us this morning, who is observing us uh, from the sidelines. We'll be following the agenda as set out in your plan. Item one on the agenda is apologies. I know at the moment we've got one apology from Councillor Lou O'Leary until he is able to log in, 
Is there any others, uh, Anna or Denise? Um, no, Chair. Denise, Chairman, there, there's no other apologies that have been received. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item two on the agenda is declarations of interest. Does any member have any declaration of pecuniary or other conflict of interest, bias or predetermination regarding any item on the agenda? Thank you. Item three on the agenda is to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 8th of April 2021. Has all members received a copy of those minutes? If members are content, I will sign those minutes as a true record of what took place as soon as I can get access to the office. Item four on the agenda is public participation. The committee has received a number of written representations submitted in accordance with the amended speaking protocol effective from the 20th July 2020. That is the first three public statements received in objection and the first three in support, including the applicant or agent, will be read out by officers not involved in the application. This number does not include representations received from town and parish councils or by relevant Dorset councillors. Written statements have been circulated to all members of the committee prior to this meeting. I believe, though, there isn't any for this particular meeting. We have two applications before us today for consideration. A comfort rate of five or ten minutes will be taken as and when is required. Now, members, we go on to item five on the agenda, planning applications. 5A is WP 200618FUL, and that is the Gurkha Bars and Buffet, Swannery Walk, Weymouth. This is a change of use of A3 restaurant to mix A3 restaurant and I A5 hot food takeaway. And I now invite Thomas Wall, the case officer, to introduce this item. Over to you, Thomas. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'll just share my screen um, so I can put the PowerPoint up. So yes, um, as you said, the application relates to the Gurkha Bars and Buffet, Swannery Walk, Weymouth. Um, the proposal for being for a change of use of the restaurant to a mixed use, um, including the restaurant and a hot food takeaway. Um, the application is before the um, committee today as the site is in the ownership of the council. Um, the application site um, is a um, jetty which has been clad to give it to the appearance of a boat moored on the side of the um, swannery in on the western edge of Weymouth town centre. Um, there is a sim simple single, single story structure on the on the site and it's currently in use as a restaurant. Um, this site's on the edge as I said the edge of the town centre of Weymouth the immediate context as shown on the aerial photograph to the right of um, the presentation is of a large public car park. There's a glass house in use as a um, garden centre and to the north we have residential apartment buildings. Um, the This is a photograph of the site taken from the um, bridge to the northwest of the site um, showing the car park to the rear and the uh, buildings of the town centre beyond. Um, this is a more close up photograph of the site. Um, there's an external um, seating and dining area and the entrance to the site from the eastern side. Um, the proposal um, is for the, the to allow the change of use to provide hot food takeaway sales. Um, the restaurant currently has takeaway sales under temporary permitted development rights, um, although these expire in March 2022. Um, therefore, the change of use application for us today will allow for the takeaway sales to continue on a permanent basis. Um, no physical works to the building are proposed as part of this application and the existing use would continue in parallel to the proposed takeaway use. So the main planning considerations uh, in this case are the impact upon the amenity of um, neighbouring residents and the highways and parking impacts implications of the development. 
in terms of um, amenity, the proposal wouldn't have any additional um, direct impacts um, by way of odour or noise from extraction equipment um, as they would utilise the existing kitchen facilities. Um, and while there is potential for additional activity levels to be um, experienced in vehicle movements, the site is adjacent to a large public car park um, and a busy junction in a town centre location. Um, the closest residential receptors are over 70 metres from the site um, and as you'll see a condition has been proposed to control the hours of opening. Um, in respect of highways and parking impacts, um, the the existing use of the site it is is already it already has um, takeaway sales. There's been no objection from the highways authority, and there is um, a large public car park immediately adjacent to the site to to meet those um, temporary needs for for drop off drop offs and pickups for um, for takeaways. So the recommendation is to grant the, plan, uh, the application subject to conditions. Um, the conditions proposed relate to the commenced, uh, used to be commenced within three years, which is a standard condition, a list of approved plans for the avoidance of any doubt, um, and the, as I mentioned, the opening hours to be limited from 10 a.m. to midnight daily. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you for that presentation. Uh, there, as I mentioned, no uh, public or, or, or council uh, representations for this particular item. But I will ask if there are any questions would take technical nature from members of the committee for the case officer. Uh, nothing at the moment, Chairman. <clears throat> Thank you, Bill. Be before I open the debate, members. Uh, Chairman, can I, can I just interrupt? on? on on the hammer, as they say in the auction business, uh, uh, Councillor Paul Kimber would like to speak. OK, thank you. Thank you, Bill. Do you have a technical question for, have, do you have a technical question for the uh, case officer, uh, Paul? Yeah, thank you, Chair. <coughs> Sorry, I just got a cough at the same time I wanted to speak. Uh, I just wanted to know about the opening now. So is that in line with other takeaways in, in the vicinity? There's quite a few in, in that area. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Can you uh, respond, please, Thomas? Um, yes, I can confirm that the this the opening hours that are uh, the, the condition limiting the open hours is in line with the in the vicinity. There's um, and specifically there is a um, KFC takeaway and drive through to the north of the site, um, which which the this the um, this would be common with the, the opening hours. Thank you, Thomas. Does that satisfy your question, uh, Paul? Uh, yeah, yes, Chair. Yes, yeah. I, I was just thinking whether it, it, it seemed a bit early, uh, possibly on a Saturday night. But uh, if it's in line with others, I'm, I'm happy. Thank you, That's very kind. OK, so, Chairman, um, I have four other uh, members who wish to speak. Uh, Kate Weller first. These are all technical questions, are they? I believe so. OK, go ahead then, uh, Kate. No, mine's not a technical question, Chair. OK, so we'll we'll take your, your response then in the debate. Any other technical questions? Sarah Williams, Chairman. Sarah, is that a technical question? Uh, mine's not necessarily a technical question. I think Nick Allen has got a technical question, though. Who Jean Dunseith, Chairman. OK, Jean, go ahead. Uh, thank, thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm not too sure this is a technical question. Do you want to leave it for the debate? I, I'll leave it until the debate, Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Right, we've, got, we've got a surefire winner here, Chairman. Councillor Nick Ireland must have a technical question. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is a technical Nick, question. Um, thank you. I just, I just, it's just um, for clarification. So, obviously, lots of other restaurants around Weymouth and Dorchester and, and all our other towns have been providing takeaways before and during COVID. So just, just adjacent to where the site we're talking about today, there is um, an Indian restaurant, the Balti House, I believe it's called. Um, do they have to have the same, you know, what, what's being requested today for the, for the Gurkha? Is that what they already have to have? Or um, do they operate under slightly something different? Um, I'm just trying to understand the difference, why, why the Gurkha couldn't provide takeaways before, essentially, I, I think is my question. Thank you, Neil. I'm going to pass that over to Thomas, if I may. Um, it, 
I think the 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 answer is that um, some some restaurants would may be able to provide um, takeaway sales as a an ancillary to their principal resident uh, residential uh, to their principal restaurant use. But in in this case, um, it, but most of them would do so as a um, under the the temporary COVID nineteen permissions and and essentially this is this is simply to to put, to make that that additional flexibility with the expanded um, hot, uh, hot food takeaway sales um, a a permanent fixture so it, it may well be that um, other restaurants would need to come forward with with similar applications if they if they wish to continue with expanded hot food sales provision thank you does that answer your question Nick I, I guess so. I think the restaurant I referred to has always provided takeaways because I've been buying for them for the last 20 years, but, um, but maybe, they, maybe they have different permission. Yeah, it, I think it's probably a, quite complex, isn't it? I'll, I'll leave it there. Okay, thank you, Nick. And back to you, you were going to say something. Yeah, yes, Chairman. Uh, just, just to say that, that it, it is a permitted development at the moment under COVID regulations, and uh, all, all, they're, all they're doing is putting it on a, a, a more legal and permanent footing. Thank you for that. OK, before I open the debate, members, may I remind you to direct any questions or remarks through the chair and I will invite members to speak in turn. Request to speak needs to be made via the virtual chat facility. Can I also remind members that the chat facility is for the smooth running of the meeting and must not be used to discuss and used for discussion on the merits of any application. Please keep microphones on mute when not speaking to preserve audio quality. I now open the debate to members. Now, do we have anyone to speak? Bill? Yes, Chairman, we have three at the moment. Uh, first Who? off would be Councillor Kate Weller. Kate Weller. OK, Kate, go ahead. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I, I, I don't have any concerns with the Gurkha um, continuing its takeaway uh operation almost all restaurants and certainly indian restaurants um do these days the, there are a number of um other restaurants in the vicinity as well as the kfc which the officer mentioned there is a mcdonald's um what i'm more concerned about is the environmental impact here and i'm quite surprised that weymouth town council didn't make any representation and that the Dorset Council ward members didn't make any representation because certainly one of them went on a walkabout with me um, last year around this particular site and the, 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 the messy aspect of the area was um, quite alarming and we did actually um, ask our officers at the town council to write to the um, restaurateurs and ask them to tidy it up. They have a number of bins outside and they have an enclosure for the bins, but the bins aren't kept in the enclosure um, and rubbish isn't kept in the enclosure. So if this is granted, and I see no reason why it shouldn't, um, and I'm, I'm guessing on the question that people were asking recently, I'm guessing that most takeaway restaurants are takeaway during the time that the main restaurant is open and and these are extending their hours and that's presumably why this is happening and if that's the case I guess it will happen for other restaurants as well but they I I would like to see a condition there that adequate con concealed areas um, I'm getting my words in a, in a muddle now areas so that the bins can be adequately concealed, that the rubbish is all kept neatly and tidy um, before um, it's collected. Because this is actually on a on a an environmental site. It is the swannery. People go there to look at wild birds. They don't go there to look at cardboard boxes and rubbish in the sides uh, you know fallen into the sides of the water and that's what's happening at the moment neither do they go there to pick their way through bits and pieces on the paved area outside the restaurant so if it's possible for the officer to put in some conditions there on the cleanliness of the peripheral area um, 
I I'd be very grateful because it's it's not good for the environment there. It's not good for the birds, um, ducks and swans pecking away at um, uh, cardboard boxes and so on. It's not a pretty sight. It's also not very healthy for them. So th those are my my problems there. Not with the operation at all. Um, it's not a restaurant I use, but I know it's very popular, um, and I have no objection to them. Uh, making a living, absolutely not. But I would like them to have a much, much tidier aspect um, in that sensitive area. Thank you, Kate. I take from that that's a proposition for amendment to introduce a condition uh, uh, for uh, for the uh, the rubbish area. Um, do we have a seconder for that, please? Uh, yeah, I'm happy to second that, uh, uh, David. Um, okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Paul. All right. OK, I'm going to go back to the case officer a moment just for any uh, to clarify any salient points you might make on that particular amendment. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I think we we can we can certainly look at um, a proposed wording for a condition. Um, I, I do know that the the restaurant does have um, bin stores that uh, and, and bin storage areas. It, I think they are to, located to the kind of northwestern side of the the um, the site. Um, so that we we need to be need to have a look at the the wording of that to make sure it's actually enforceable and and in a wording that that can be adequately enforced as part as part of this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go back to Anna just to 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 inquire whether a precise wording of that particular amendment at a particular point in time. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I think I would suggest um, that if the um, if the proposal is is agreed, that it would be delegated um, to officers in consultation with yourself as the chair to agree the the precise wording of that condition, if if that would be um, acceptable to to everyone. Thank you. That, that that's exactly what I thought. Okay. Think, um, before we proceed any further, uh, I think the, the solicitor would like uh, like to speak. Okay. okay, okay, Phil. Uh, over to you, Phil. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, just to remind um, members and particularly councillors Weller and Kimber that the um, tests for imposing it, there are um, tests which need to be met for imposing conditions. Um, and they are that the condition is necessary, it's relevant to planning, it's relevant to the development, it's enforceable, precise and reasonable in all other respects. Um, I, whilst I'm um, content with um, Mrs Lee's suggestion that officers could put together a, um, or, or draft a condition to be um, uh, agreed by the chairman and vice chairman after the meeting which meets that meets the proposal. Um, I, I think we we do need to just um, take a minute to reflect on on whether those um, tests are met, uh, and in particular, given Mr. Wilde's comments, whether we could draft a condition which was in fact enforceable. Um, you know, I would have. Um, there might be issues, for example, around who is generating the who is generating the rubbish and therefore who's res responsible for it if it can't be shown to be that the rubbish is generated by the by the restaurant then we would be in a in a significant difficulty in enforcing that condition thank you chairman chairman i think um councillor weller would like to come back okay thank you uh, um, that's it. <clears throat> Thanks very much, Chairman. Um, I understand exactly what um, our legal representative and, and uh, Philip and, and Anna are saying about um, the conditions and so on and where we are on that. Um, and I never like uh, conditions on anything. If we can't enforce them, um, they're not worth the paper they're written on. Um, but in this particular instance, indeed, some of the rubbish is generated by the KFC, the McDonald's and the other places around, obviously, and the Gurkha restaurant can't be. Um, do, we can't demand them to sort out other people's rubbish, but in there they do have a store bin storage area and they don't keep their rubbish in that storage area. So the boxes which are there, they're, they're clearly their boxes, 
are piled up outside. And I think that that's, you know, if they're extending their business, which they will be with a, a takeaway business as well, there will be even more boxes. I don't want to see those piled up on the outside of the rubbish storage area. All rubbish should be piled up properly inside the rubbish area so that it's neat and tidy and in a, in a decent place for when it's collected and after it's collected that area is tidied up because this is an environmentally sensitive area it's part you know it's managed by the RSPB um, it's a, a, a popular bird sanctuary in the middle of an urban area that's quite rare and it's important to um, I think it's important to um, look after uh, that popular popular space. It brings a lot of visitors down and it's not attractive if it's covered in cardboard boxes. Thank you, Kate. OK. So where we are with this particular amendment is that we're seeking for precise wording which would be enforceable against uh, against the uh, the Gurkha bars and buffet. Um, I'm happy for you to to for that to be dele delegated to you, Chairman, um, with the officers are, are afterwards to find some way of impressing upon the applicants that they do need to maintain their rubbish in their rubbish area. It, it, it needs no more than that, um, but they need to be made aware and I'm happy for that to be delegated to you. OK, and I'll go over to, to Councillor Paul Kemba. I the seconder for this. Are you happy with the the proposal from, uh, from Councillor Bell? Uh, absolutely, uh, Chair. Uh, Councillor Kate Bell has got it uh, dead right to consider the environmental considerations. Um, I'll just add a little bit to Kate. Um, as you know, we've been uh, we, we had some bad publicity with another food outlet recent, recently uh, being left in the mess. Now, I do know uh, from a colleague or a friend who, who works in one of the multinational ones, uh, takeaways in, in the centre of Weymouth, uh, but I can say McDonald's, they, uh, they seem to send their staff out just before they close to skirmish the area. So I, I think with your good self and the officers, you, you could certainly sit down and, and talk with the um, local restaurants to see if we can find a way through this. Thank you. Okay. I Before we go any further, Chairman, I know could I ask speak. Anna to, to speak, please? Yes, yes, I've yeah. Thank, okay. thank you, thank you, Chairman. I just, I just want to pick up on really um, uh, on the points that the Councillor Weller um, was making, and also um, the points that Mr. Crowver made a moment ago in regard to enforceability, and really just a suggestion that rather than seeking to address this through a planning condition, which I think potentially would be quite difficult to enforce, that we would do this more as an, a, an information note to the applicant um, to highlight the concerns, um, and it's then not not singling them out as well, but it's highlighting the general concerns. I don't know if that would be amenable to to Councillor Weller and, and the councillors. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. I'll go, I'll hand, I'll go back to, to uh, Councillor uh, Weller for her comments on that, please. Um, yes, uh, really all I'm trying to achieve is that that area around there is tidied <laughs> up and it's kept tidy. And if Anna feels that a conversation um, will help with that, then I'm very, very happy to, to go along. I'm not trying to single them out because it's it's a problem outside all of these places and it's a problem of customers rather than the restaurateurs themselves. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to go down, down that line at the moment. Um, if we have to look at it again, um, we can do so. Weymouth Town Councillors, it's an area that they're keeping a very close eye on anyway. So um, we can we can follow up other lines if we need to. Thank you. OK, uh, Councillor uh, Well, I, I take from that you're withdrawing your proposal in favour of a, 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 a advisory note to the applicant. Um, Certainly, Chairman. It, it was hardly a proposal, really. It was just a, a concern that I have about the the, the, the rubbish generally <coughs> around there, and that's been very well aired. <laughs> so thank okay. you for that. Okay. Um, and um, in other respects, I, I, I wish every every business in the town the very best of luck in coming back uh, uh, strongly. 
Okay, now go go to Paul Kim, uh, Councillor Kimber. Um, uh, are you happy with the withdrawal of that, uh, that pro proposal in favour of a uh, advisory note? Uh, absolutely, Chair. Um, just just to say, um, Councillor Will is right to raise this because I I believe we we do have a problem with this with this that we've got to look at. Thank you. Okay. All right. Right. Do. OK, do we have any other speakers, uh, Bill? Yes, yes, Chairman. Um, Councillor Sarah Williams. OK, OK, Sarah, go ahead. Yeah, um, good afternoon, Chair. Uh, good morning, Chair, even. Um, oh, mine's okay. on a cinema note, but rather than discussing the bin, bins that uh, Gurkha have got, are there adequate public litter bins in this area? And if not, can we have some more provided? Because obviously takeaway is going to generate a lot more waste coming out of uh, out of a restaurant. The only point with that, Sarah, is the fact that that is not relevant to this particular application. But that will certainly be taken on on board and I will ask the officers uh, that uh, separately. Yeah. OK, thank you. Yeah. Any other speakers, Bill? Yes, uh, finally, Councillor Jean Dunseith, Chairman. OK, uh, thank you, Chairman. Go okay. ahead. My my uh, comment is it's it's it will be a takeaway restaurant. And normally when you're doing takeaways, you you can drive up and park and, and get your takeaway. And I believe they do a delivery service now. Presumably we're not allowing or expecting uh, vehicles to drive up to the Gurkha restaurant and then people get out and have cars all over the place because I do know there is there is a car park very close it's adjacent to it so I'm just asking um, if it is envisaged that that might happen or that, that won't be allowed to happen thank, thank you, you chairman you. I'm going to pass on your question uh, to uh, Thomas to uh, to uh, to respond, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes, I think well, I think we would envisage that any um, <coughs> any vehicles accessing the site would be expected to utilise the existing public car park, um, and and exi any existing parking restrictions in the area would would remain in place. Thank you. Thank you. Is that satisfy your Yes, no, that's fine. OK, Jane. Fine, Bill, do we have any any other speakers? Uh, but no other speakers, uh, Chairman, but Councillor John Worth would like to move to the uh, uh, recommendation. And on that recommendation, you have a seconder and Councillor Susan Cocking. So, John, John, may I confirm that you're proposing acceptance of this, uh, this uh, presentation and proposal? Yes, yes I'm proposing, David, that we so you're very quiet. I'm proposing um, that we grant permission as per the officer's recommendations for this, David. OK, thank you. you have, we have a proposal. Who was seconding again? Councillor mm -hmm. Susan Cocking, Chairman. Oh, hello, Susan. Yeah, go ahead. Are you seconding? Yes, I would like to second it. We need to encourage businesses to thrive in the current climate and for ne in the next few years, and we need to support them as much as possible. I'm a take on Councillor Weller's concerns, but it's up to everyone to dispose of their rubbish. It's everyone's responsibility, not just the council or the restaurants. Um, but yes, we need to help businesses as much as possible. OK, Susan, there, thank, thank you. Right, right, members, if there's no more speakers, we have a proposal at, which has been duly seconded. I will take a vote by roll call. OK, right, Councillor David, Dave Bower. Support, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Kelvin Clayton. Yeah, I support, Chair. Thank you. I vote clarity, uh, Councillor Susan Cocking. Support, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Jean Dunser. Approved, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Bill Pike. Four, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Nick Ireland. Four, Chairman. Uh, Councillor Paul Gimba. Four, Chair. Thank you. Councillor, uh, Councillor Louis Leary, still not here? Uh, Councillor O'Leary has, has sadly given up his attempts to join Chairman. 
OK, had it been recorded as an apology? I did give his provisional apology at the start of the meeting. I just confirmed that with um, Denise. Councillor Kate Ketweller. Four. Thank you. Councillor Susan Williams, Sarah Williams, sorry. Four, Chair. Thank you. And for clarity, Councillor John Burr. Four, Chairman. I am also in favour. I believe, therefore, that is unanimous. Thank you, members. We'll now take item 5B on the agenda, and that is uh, WDD 21000089, which is the Lyme Regis Golf Club, Ember Hill, Lyme Regis. And this is for the erection of a fence. Uh, I now invite, uh, if present, uh, Emma Telford, the case officer, to introduce this item. Emma is present, Chairman. Well, thank, thank you. Chair. Good morning, Emma. Sorry, I have been having a few technical difficulties, but it does seem to all be um, running now. Oh, glad to hear it. <laughs> OK, Emma, go ahead. Can you see the slideshow? Yes, we can. Perfect. Yeah, yes, OK. Uh, so this application is at Lyme Regis Golf Club and it's for the erection of a fence um, and it's been referred to committee as it has been the application has been submitted on behalf of the council. Uh, so the application site is within um, the existing Lyme Regis Golf Club um, on the north east boundary which you can see in that red square on the top right plan. Um, you've got this coppice to the north and you've got the existing um, golf course to the south. Um, the proposal involves the erection of a fence. Um, it would be positioned two metres away from the boundary um, and it would be 106 metres long. Uh, this shows the, the proposed elevations of the fence. Um, it would be located between the golf course and the New England coast path. Um, and it is required to comply with health and safety regulations um, to stop any stray golf balls from hitting users of that new path. Um, it would be a chain link fence. Um, it would be 2.45 metres high um, and it would be finished in a dark green colour. Uh, I've got some photos next which show the location of the, um, the proposed fence and it would be located in between that hard surface path you can see in the photo um, and the marker, so it will be in between the two. Further photos there to show where the fence would be and the relationship with the, the golf course and the path. In terms of the key planning issues, um, the fence is required to comply with health and safety implications of that, that new England coast path. Um, a fence was previously approved in the same location in 2018, um, but this this application amends the the design and the dimensions of the fence. Um, the application site is located within the AOMB and Heritage Coast. Um, as part of the application, the AOMB landscape officer was consulted. Um, they raised no objections, but they did set out that because users of the golf course um, would see the fence with the um, with the foreground of the fairway and a backdrop of the woodland and that users of the path um, would have a closer up view of the fence that it should be finished in a dark green colour. Um, the recommendation for this one is to grant subject to the standard conditions uh, of the time period and the plans list and then also a condition to ensure that it is that dark green colour as requested by the OMB landscape officer um, and that's it thank you chair thank you emma thank you for your present for your presentation uh, i understand that there's no uh, 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 public or council representations for this particular item so i should go straight on to ask if there's any questions of a technical nature for the case officer from members of the committee 
While I say no at the moment, Chairman, uh, we may, may may have a little rush while uh, people actually uh, get into the chat bar. But at the moment, I'm going to say Councillor Paul Kimber. OK, uh, Councillor Kimber, would you like to uh, like to say for your work, uh, ask a technical question? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Chair. Um, as it's the Southwest Coastal Path and the, the fence looks lovely at the moment, um, is there any ongoing um, maintenance on, on particularly on this fence? So after a few years, they tend to look a bit that they said sometimes they look worse than have not having a fence uh, after a few years. I just wondered if there's any sort of ongoing uh, duty of care. OK, thank you very much indeed. I'm going to hand that back to, uh, to Emma to respond. Um, not that I'm aware of. Um, obviously, the condition is that it will be finished in a dark green colour. Um, that condition could be amended to say and retained as such um, to ensure that it's retained in that colour. Um, but besides from that, I don't know what else we could um, ensure they do. Okay. I'll hand back to to uh, to Paul. Do, would that satisfy your thoughts? Your yeah, question? Absolutely, Chair. I'm happy with Emma, Emma's uh, thinking on this. Yeah, it's just that thought is possibly after about eight or nine years, they they look they can look pretty awful. Thank you. I, th I think Councillor Kimber was just, just the, the only one there, Chairman. There, there are no others. OK, can I, can, Emma, can I just confirm that in fact what the intention is now to actually have a slight change of wording in that, saying fences should be finished and maintained in a dark green colour? Um, so the con sorry, the condition currently reads, um, the fence hereby approved shall be finished in a dark green colour. Um, so I propose that we um, add on to the end and retained as such thereafter. OK, Councillor Kim, are you happy with that? Absolutely, Chair. Yeah, yeah, I don't think we need to, it's just a, 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 a small change. I've got to go back to Anna, we don't need any uh, anything other than the officer's ability to change that wording slightly. Um, no, I think we can just we can just make that change, Chairman, if, if, if members are happy with that. All right, that's fine. Oh, that's good. Right, OK. Is there any other speakers um, before I go to debate? Um, Bill? Uh, none, at, none at all, Chairman. You do actually have um, a proposal and a seconder in the chat bar. OK, right. OK. If, if, of I course, there are no, uh, no, no, no debate. Sir, please. Nobody wishes to speak. Yeah, who's the proposer, please? The proposer would be Councillor Sarah Williams, Chairman, and the uh, seconder would be Councillor Kate Weller. Oh, OK, uh, just to confirm, Sarah, you're proposing acceptance of the of the recommendation. Yeah, I'm happy to propose acceptance for this. It's a health and safety issue uh, and it's a good solution. OK, and Councillor Weller, are you, you're happy to second that as well? Absolutely agree with Sarah. Okay. And is that with that amended wording? Yes. Yes. OK, that's fine. OK, if there's no other speakers, if there's, if there's no more deliberation and members are content, they've heard the entire presentation and, and debate, I will um, I'll take a vote by roll call and I'll start off with uh, Councillor Dave Bowell. Support, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Kevin Clayton. Likewise, support, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Susan Cocking. I support, Chair. Yeah, Councillor Jean Dancer. In favour, Chair. Thank you, Jean. Uh, Councillor Bill Pike. Four, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Nick Ireland. Four, Chairman. Thank you, Nick. Uh, Councillor Paul Kimber. Uh, uh, four, Chair. Thank you. For clarity, Councillor Kate Weller. Four. Thank you. And for clarity, Councillor Sarah Williams. Four, Chair. And Councillor John Burr. Four, Chairman. And I'm also in favour. That is therefore, I believe, unanimous. 
Okay. Uh, there's uh, no no reference to appeals uh, on the agenda, so I'll go straight on to item seven on the agenda, urgent items. And I've had no prior notification of any item of this items of business which is considered to be urgent pursuant to section 100B. 4B of the Local Government Act 1972. Therefore, members, I believe we've come to the end of this particular committee. And thank you for your indulgence. Thank you all. Thank you. And before we